Hello, I'm Lynn Walshaw, the Workforce Transformation Lead for DCHS, and I would like to introduce you to this series of online training videos to support you in accessing materials to develop your skills and knowledge. These videos will focus on targeting specific training, such as the Waterloo Scoring System, Record Keeping, Equality and Diversity, and a number of theoretical components of clinical skills. This approach allows you to access training materials at times to suit you and your teams, and in an environment closer to work. It allows for our trainers to deliver the necessary face-to-face -face training elements too. We are constantly looking to improve ways of delivering and accessing training and developments. This allows our staff to learn in their own environment and at their own speed, which increases knowledge retention. You can watch the videos on a multitude of devices, from smartphones and tablets to laptops and desktop computers. Some of the training videos will require you to complete an online test after watching, and if you successfully pass, you will receive a certificate to print out as proof of completion. We hope you find these online training courses effective and look forward to your feedback. In this video, we will be looking at equality, diversity and inclusion. Equality, diversity and inclusion is so important to fundamentally who we are and what we're all about across DCHS. We thought it'd be a great idea to make a video sharing different people's perspectives about what those three words actually mean to them, to their colleagues and their patients, to help us all think a bit more and make sure that we're keeping equality, diversity and inclusion at the heart of the way we go about doing our jobs each day. We come in loads of different shapes and sizes, loads of different backgrounds and beliefs, we have different challenges in terms of impairments. The NHS is here for all of us. The NHS is of the people, it's for the people. And actually as a community health services provider, we have to make sure that our services are friendly and accessible to people, whatever their backgrounds, their religions, their beliefs, their gender, their sexuality, all those protected characteristics. And we have to make sure that as an organisation that employs four and a half thousand people, we're able to employ the very best people, whatever their backgrounds, and be a, an, an organisation that supports people with all their differences. And we need to have an awareness of the barriers that different people might face in accessing us at our services or in getting a job and working effectively within the organisation. And have that general awareness but more importantly, be really attuned to working with people as individuals, either as individual patients or individual members of staff, to understand their particular barriers and challenges and make sure that we adapt what we do um, to accommodate those. Welcome to this quick introduction to Equality and Diversity at DCHS and what it means for you and me as employees. I'm Sally Edwards and I'm the organisational lead for equality, diversity and inclusion. My role is to help DCHS to embed good practice in our employment practices so that we treat our employees and those applying for a job with us fairly and equitably. And it's also about making sure that our services are accessible and that they meet the individual needs of all of our patients. So I can hear you asking. What's equality, diversity and inclusion all about then? It's a big topic. Um, um, what's it again? Oh, that's a difficult question. What's it mean to me? Um. Oh, Gordon Bennett. Do you know I wrote this down? I think it's on that bit of paper over there. It means that everyone should be treated equal and everyone should have the same opportunities as everyone else and, and treated fairly. It's about treating everybody fairly and with respect and, and treating them in relation to their need really. To be able uh, to see the other people for what they are and what their potential, we need um, to listen to them and, and let them um, express and, and judge for what they do, not for what they look like or, or what you think that they do. 
we have lots of different people living, especially if it relates to Britain, and I'm very proud of it actually, we're relating to Britain, I think it's very good that we are a diverse community, because that everybody's different, whether they're different because of their race or their background or what they've done, that everybody's different, and equality is making sure you treat everybody to achieve the same outcome. So let's look at equality first. Equality is about fair treatment. The Department of Health has defined equality as being about creating a fairer society where everyone can participate and has the opportunity to fulfil their potential. It's about recognising that inequality does exist and that discrimination needs to be tackled. Employment and services should be accessible to all. Everyone should be treated fairly and that everyone has individual needs and the right to have those needs respected. So what about diversity then? Isn't it just the same thing as equality? Well, not quite. Diversity is about respecting difference. It recognises that everyone's an individual with their own background, experiences, styles, perceptions, values and beliefs. And what we need to do is understand, value and respect those differences. As the author, Maya Angelou said, Diversity is the one true thing we all have in common. Celebrate it every day. And what about inclusion? Well, inclusion is the opposite of exclusion. So thinking about it that way is clearly about making sure that everyone is part of what we do. This applies to both employment and service delivery. It's not a nice feeling to be excluded from something. So inclusion is about building relationships with people and removing the barriers that some people face to being included or part of the group. So, I can hear you all ask, what does this mean to me? It means that we need to accept that there's no single way of treating anyone, as everybody is an individual. However, we do need to treat people with respect and fairness, and we need to take a flexible and creative approach to making sure that we're an inclusive employer and service provider. So let's hear from a few people who work for DCHS about what equality and diversity means for them. Hi, I'm Pete and I work in the communications and marketing team. I'm also an active member of the BME staff network group. For me, equality and diversity is about valuing everyone's contribution. I feel strongly that it's not appropriate to take a one size fits all approach to anything that we do, we need to value and respect everyone as individuals. Everyone has an important part to play in making equality a reality in DCHS. As a DCHS employee, I know how, how important it is to work in a positive team environment where everyone is valued and where people feel welcome. I think it's so important for us all as individuals to recognise that we all have a part to play in making DCHS a welcoming organisation. As an active member of our BME staff network group, which always welcomes new members by the way, from all ethnic backgrounds and nationalities, just so long as you're passionate about achieving race equality, I get to hear about those occasions when workplaces haven't been as welcoming as they should be. The impact that this has on individuals is incredible and I'm sure that if people really knew how their behaviour was affecting others, they would think twice and be more inclusive. In the last staff survey, it showed that there's a need for us to become more diverse. If we encounter discrimination from a colleague, a member of the public or a patient, we all know that we have a duty to challenge it, both for our personal benefit and for that of the whole organisation. We must never feel scared for standing up for what's right. Hello, my name is Joanne, and I'm a community nurse. I'm also an active member of the Black and Ending Minority Group at DCHS. And today, I want to talk to you something I feel very passionate about, equality and diversity. Did you know that in the NHS Constitution it says that the need to provide a comprehensive services irrespective of who you are? This is embedded in our DCHS way. DCHS values diversity and expects its employees to treat each other and all the services users with fairness and respect. 
I firmly believe that without diversity and cultural exchange, we will not live in the society that we live nowadays. For a starter, we will not have democracy, because that comes from the Greeks, and we will not be speaking English, because that comes from the Romans. Also, we will not have numeracy, and because that was invented from the Arabs. And probably, the most important of all, we will not be able to eat fish and chips, because the potato comes from South America. And it's because all the interchange of culture and values and embracing diversity that we are what we are today. For me, equality and diversity is part of who I am and it reflects in everything I do. If we don't treat the people right with dignity and compassion and ignore or undermine their feelings, we will never be able to provide the gold standard care that DCHS aspire to provide. The patient needs to be in the center of everything we do. Listening to their wishes and beliefs needs to be a paramount to make the patient experience a positive one. Lastly, I want to say that discrimination, unfortunately, is still part of some people's everyday life. And if we chose to ignore it, we became accomplices of it. Nowadays, discrimination is not okay, and we must not feel scared of standing up for what's right. I know that DCHS supports its entire employees and they will support them if they ever need to challenge the behavior of either a fellow member or a patient. Don't keep quiet, don't be afraid, speak out loud. Hello, I'm Helen Ritchie. I'm part of the staff partnership team and staff side lead for equality, diversity and inclusion. I'm also an active member of Myriad Voices or MV our staff network group for lesbian, gay, bisexual and trans employees and their allies. I fit a few of the protected characteristics. I am white, as you might be able to tell, a female, and as you might not be able to tell, a lesbian, and have a disability, multiple sclerosis. I am also getting older by the minute. I believe that we should be able to be open about all aspects of who we are, safe in the knowledge that someone else's views and opinions will not negatively affect us. Many different things affect the way we think what we believe in and affect what we value in life. These include our family upbringing, our religion or beliefs and our life experiences which can be positive or negative. We all stereotype people and have the potential to act in discriminatory ways. This is what psychologists call unconscious bias. These are natural people preferences. Research has shown that our brains are hardwired to prefer people who look like us talk like us and share our interests. The problem with this is that we may, without perhaps even knowing it, treat people less favourably because they are different from us. We need to be aware that we all have biases and to recognise that this may affect the way we behave towards other people. So my advice is to think about what you believe and consider why you think that way. We are all human and deserve respect. Hi, I'm Zoe and I'm an Administrative Officer with DCHS. Equality to me is about treating people fairly. It's about not discriminating against people because of who they are, what they look like or where they're from. I know that there is a legislation in place to protect people from discrimination. This is called the Equality Act 2010. The Act protects people on the grounds of age, gender, disability and race. It also protects from discrimination on the grounds of religion or belief, sexual orientation, gender reassignment, marriage and civil partnership, pregnancy and maternity. Personally, I fit into a number of these protected categories. I'm a white British woman, I am married, I am heterosexual, and I'm not telling you how old I am, but I have a specific age. And finally, I have been pregnant and have taken maternity leave. Whilst I do not have a disability, I know plenty of people who have. In fact, the person next to you could be disabled because the majority of disabilities are hidden. Not everyone who has a disability uses a wheelchair, contrary to popular belief. I am protected by the Equality Act 2010 against discrimination. The reality is you are likely to be protected too. Okay. So we now know a bit more about equality and diversity and inclusion, about what those terms mean, and we've also heard from a few people about why it's important to them. 
So why is it important to DCHS? Does it really matter? What will happen if we don't treat people fairly? What does it mean for our service users if we don't understand their needs or treat them with dignity and respect? I think these are easy questions to answer. Think about it from this particular point of view. For a few minutes, pretend you are this service user. Here are some of your characteristics. You're 56 years old, you live alone in a rural area. Have very few visitors as your family lives down south. You are deaf and your first language is British Sign Language. Here is your story. You have been referred to our podiatry outpatient services by your GP because you have been experiencing problems with your feet. In fact, the problems have been gradually getting worse and now you struggle to get out and do the weekly food shopping. You receive a letter from your local podiatry outpatient clinic asking you to ring a number to arrange your appointment. What do you do? You cannot ring the number as it is a telephone number and you won't be able to hear what the other person is saying. Your only option is to ask someone, hopefully someone you know and trust, to ring and make the appointment on your behalf. How does this make you feel? Maybe you feel frustrated that your local health services don't cater for people with a hearing impairment who has unique communication needs. The experience may even put you off for using our services in the future. So what could we have done better? We could have better understood your needs. If the information on the GP referral form identified the patient as being deaf, we should have tailored our communications so that they were accessible. If that information wasn't on the original referral form, we could have taken a generally more inclusive approach to the way we invite patients to their appointments. For example, we could have included a text number or an email address as alternatives to a telephone number on our letter. It's simple really, isn't it? In the NHS Constitution, it says that the NHS provides a comprehensive service available to all, irrespective of gender, race, disability, age, sexual orientation, religion or belief. It has a duty to each and every individual that it serves and must respect their human rights. At the same time, it has a wider social duty to promote equality. In terms of the DCHS way, we value diversity and expect all of our employees to treat each other and all service users with fairness and respect. As employees of DCHS, we all have a responsibility, both legal and moral, to treat our colleagues and every patient fairly and ensure that we promote equality in everything that we do. I think it's important for us all to remember that we all work in diverse teams with people of different genders, ethnic origins, sexual orientation, ability, beliefs, values and working styles. Our patients and service users are diverse and have different needs. We need to understand and respect these if we are to provide inclusive services. And even though we don't think so, equality and diversity affects us all. I think we all need to take a positive approach to equality and diversity and challenge our own stereotypes and assumptions which might affect the way that we behave with our colleagues and our service users. We also need to challenge inappropriate behaviour. This might be directly or indirectly, depending upon the situation and how comfortable or safe you feel. We must ensure that we find out what people's individual needs and requirements are by asking them. We can't make assumptions about what they need. We need to take a flexible and creative approach to improving our services and ensure that everyone who needs or wants to use it can do so. You will need to undertake further training on this topic as part of your essential learning, so please make sure that you talk to your manager about it during your appraisal. This learning can be done through participative workshops or by e-learning. For more information, look at the Equality and Diversity pages on our website. If you need any help, advice or further information, you can contact me, Sally Edwards, on email at sally.edwards at dchs.nhs.uk or if it's confidential, at sally.edwards12 at nhs.net.